Looks like we have to cross a makeshift bridge. Check this out. That's a bridge over a pit. Those timbers look brand new, almost as what they did back in the 1920s or 1930s when they were initially installed. So I think we can get across this with no problem. I really don't like doing stuff like this. Granted, that's only a, not a very deep drop, but it might, falling down in there might be hard to get out of there. So you really have to be careful about stuff like this. And you can see the timbers there are really securely attached to the uh, sides. It is a little wobbly, this one on the right. Oh, you can see down there some water too, right down there. So that's where the flooding starts on the lower levels. You can see some water right down there where my light is. So, okay, let me try to get across this. Uh, whew, got across that. So here is an ore chute coming down from the upper levels. So the ore carts would pull right up here and they would open the chute gate and rocks would tumble out into the car, into the cart. So this is looking up the ore chute. You can see it leads up into what they call a stope. And that a stope is just the cavity that remains after the miners remove all the ore. And they would have sent it right down here into this chute. And uh, it looks like the upper level is right up there. Yeah, so Jeff from OTG Exploring is going to come back here, he told me, and he's going to climb up this ore chute. It's pretty clear on both sides, so there's no danger of stacked rocks coming down or anything like that. Be sure to subscribe to Jeff's channel, OTG Exploring, and uh, ring the bell so you can be notified of all his uploads. And he's going to come back here and go up this chute and access the upper areas. So there's the ore chute we just looked up. Let's continue down this branching tunnel. I think we're going to come to a dead end up here, I think. Or it might be a, uh, a T intersection. Um, but yeah. Okay, we got some of that. There might be another. Oh, look at that. Right up there. I was right. There's another colony of bats. See that right there? Let me try to zoom in. That's as far as I can zoom in. Oh, it looks like the looks like the tunnel. Now the bats are all flying past me. Look at that. Yep. Looks like the tunnel uh, goes to the left and right, I guess. Okay, that's a dead end. There's probably bats down there roosting, I bet. We'll keep going this way. Well, I reached a question mark. I got a branch to the left and kind of a smaller one to the right. Let's go to the right. I, I have forgotten Gosh, this keeps going. I've forgotten how extensive this was. But the funny thing about this mine is the, the history that I did on it, the research, this mine really wasn't ever a big producer of, uh, of anything. From what I, I remember reading, it was kind of a dud. This is a dead end up here. What the miners would call the face. Well, it does dead end right there, but it goes to the right. We just came from that way. Wow, this is extensive. I've forgotten about all this. That's the end. 
Okay, so let's head back to that junction and take that other tunnel that was going off to the left. We're back at the question mark. We just came from that tunnel, so let's take the left branch and see where this goes. See if we find any more uh, bats all clustered up on the ceiling. Well, I think we're approaching the end. This only went about 100 feet, 150 feet, this branch. And uh, there's the face. So the miners would often write their names and dates at the end of the tunnel on the face. Oops, got a bat flying here. Um, maybe, maybe this bat will let us, oh, see right up there? There's a couple of them. They're awake, see that? There's two of them, there. uh, there's three of them there. Now there's two. But yeah, let's check out these dates real quick. So you got 1939, uh, right there. Dickie somebody. Um, yeah, so pretty cool. Uh, that's the only name I see. There's some modern graffiti here in color, but that was that black graffiti was done with a carbide lamp. So 1939, so a long time ago. Oh, here's another one. 1907. I wonder if that's... Maybe so. This might have been started in the early 1900s, this mine. I don't know. There's Bob 57, 1957. A little more recent. And we're going to head back and get out of here. I'm about to cross back over this pit. Like I said, I really don't like doing these kinds of things. Um, okay, I gotta put one foot there. Well, that board is kind of wobbly, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, there's a. See that right there? There's a. You can see a wall back up in there. I don't know if that comes out to where we're headed. I think it might. Or, or maybe that's the room with the flooded vertical. Uh, I can't remember. But yeah, you can see down there the flooding. That's where that dark brown is, that's, that's wet, that's water. So it's kind of rare to find a, a mine tunnel like this that would have had ore cart tracks going across a bridge. It's rare to find bridges like this. Too bad the ore cart tracks still aren't on it. That'd be cool to see, but they probably ran right across here and when you, you can see the indentations for the cross tie so so there was a bridge here at some point and uh, that's how they got the carts out across that bridge okay so wrapping around here to the right this takes us back out to the uh oh yeah okay that opening okay yeah that, that opening is right here that little hole we saw that leads up into that area, all those stopes. That's pretty cool. So anyway. Well, I think that's pretty much it. I'm gonna head back here to the main junction. Let these bats get their sleep and um, get out of here. When we turn right here, we should see the uh, portal. If we don't, we're lost. Yep, there it is. All right, so hope you enjoyed that tour, and uh, that's it for now.